this is Joe Dante on directing Zach Galligan. Zach was always trying to show off his acting skills, but could never keep his mouth closed. I would have to yell, yeah, you're doing great. Close your mouth. <laughs> if you go back and watch the film, his mouth is open most of the time. <laughs> oh, my God. Now I have to go back and watch this. Just like a gape, like a big dummy. Uh, well, because he's so shocked about the gremlins and, and the mogwai. And... <laughs> oh, God. What is it? No. Mushroom. The dog who played Barney. Oh, oh my God, Barney! Were you at one point? You were like, "That's like the best acting I've ever seen out of a dog." Oh yeah, no, he was great. Uh, I hope he got at least one million. You're doing great, Mushroom. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Cl- Mushroom. Can you, can you, keep, you please close your mushroom, mouth, Mushroom. <laughs> you keep that mouth open. That that was what was happening. Mushroom was panting, and everyone was like, "Oh, Mushroom is such a good boy. He's so good at acting." And then Zach was like, "Oh, oh is that how <laughs> acting works?" <laughs> Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world, when there are millions of dollars on the line. We're going to talk about these disastrous, never-ending, and sometimes downright dangerous productions. This is The Shit Show. Hello, everyone. My name is Ian, and I am joined, as always, by Clint. Hello. And Ray. Hello. (laughs) And this is The Shit Show. (laughs) So last Halloween, Ray wondered if there was a scary movie she hadn't seen. But not too scary. Just like a little bit scary. That Mm -hmm. was missing from her repertoire um, that she needed to fill in. Stuff like Halloween or... Friday the 13th mm-hmm. or Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. And I'm not... Classic horror films. Yeah, not being a horror fan at all. I don't like those. I don't care for those movies. Right. Um, I chose Gremlins. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, hey, let's watch a classic horror movie for Halloween. And Ian's like, Gremlins? Gremlins? And then we watch that and I'm like, bro, this is a Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bro, bro, do you know what month it is? I like that you said. We, I like that you said like January wanted to watch a horror film that she hadn't seen before for Halloween, and she's like she needs to fill in the gaps, you know, like with Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street. Like those mm-hmm. are the top three. Like, I know that you yeah, would try and see. Like you got yeah. to fill in the gaps. Those, those. <laughs> <laughs> those are the ones you should have seen already and those, then trying to fill in the gaps. I know. Those are the, but those are my gaps. <laughs> Look, we've talked about my gaps. Everybody knows. That's Don't true. judge me. Everybody on the internet is talking about your gaps. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we so... talked about the movies you haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's talking about my movie gaps and my thigh gaps. <laughs> All the gaps. So today, let's talk about the horror Christmas classic, Gremlins. Well, the biggest question was how are these gremlins going to be created? And we flirted briefly with the idea of putting monkeys in suits. And uh, we got a rhesus monkey and put a gremlin uh, head on him. And uh, he ran all over the editing room and shot all over everything. And we realized that that wasn't going to work. So it became basically up to us to pioneer some sort of new kind of puppeteering, sort of on the Muppet vein. But it, it had never been done to this extent before. So we were really basically r and ing our movie while we while we made it. So let's start with, why are you wearing that hat? Okay. <laughs> What's up with the hat? So listen, I am wearing my Indiana Jones hat. <laughs> and if you remember last time when we when we did uh, Back to the Future, I wore my Marty McFly hat. Right. But we were trying to think, well, what's Indiana Jones got to do with Gremlins? Well, it's produced by Spielberg. Spielberg directed Indiana Jones. And so I had to think of myself, like, mm-hmm. I got to bring something to the recording. Like so, I was, but I was like, but I don't have anything gremlins. I even texted my brother. I was like, hey, what gremlins things do you have? He's like, well, I've got a, I've got a toy gizmo. I'm like, perfect. He's like, but it's at my office at work. Like, oh, damn it. So I was like, well, I'll just throw on my Indiana Jones hat. So that's why I wore my Indiana Jones hat because of the Steven Spielberg connection. And your Ferris Bueller's Day Off T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, what does true. that have to do with gremlins? <laughs> yeah, I just threw it on. Eighties <laughs> man. Yeah. <laughs> just repping the just just ge- repping generic eighties. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now I'm going to take it off because it's kind of warm in here. <laughs> you don't know how serendipitous that hat is, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, Oh, let's... my God. Was there a hat situation in Gremlins? <laughs> no. Well, let's, let's get into it. Okay. Okay, so written by Chris Columbus. This was his second movie that he wrote. He went on to write Goonies, 
directed Home Alone, Mrs. Doubtfire, the first two Harry Potter movies. So this is where he kind of got his start. Mm. Uh, he initially just wrote it to show off his skills in different genres, but somehow it ends up in the hands of Steven Spielberg, okay. who instantly fast tracks it. He's like, I want to make this. So he's like made. the mm. Beck of film writers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He's just getting all experimental. You know what? I'm going to do a mashup. It's going to be a horror movie, but also kind of a kid's movie, but at Christmas. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what a perfect Spielberg impersonation. Thanks. That was Chris Columbus, actually. Oh. oh okay. That was Clint doing a Chris oh, Columbus. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Spielberg wanted to produce a low-budget horror film. He, he was kind of interested in that idea. I mean, he did Jaws. He wanted just to produce one. Uh, so he went to Tim Burton first hmm. to direct it. Based off of his animated short, Frank and Weenie. Right. Which he eventually went in and made a full movie out of. Uh, but Warner Brothers wasn't willing to give such a technical film to a first-time director. And then he he went on to do Pee-wee. Yep. Um, he then hires Joe Dante because of The Howling, a low-budget horror film. Mm. And they also worked together on future shit show episode, The Twilight Zone movie. Oh, Yes. <laughs> Thank God. I fucking love the Twilight Zone. And when you just now, like, I just got like a nerdgasm because <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited for that. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Uh, the original script for Gremlins was much more of a horror film. This was very interesting. Gizmo, the Mogwai, becomes Stripe. The oh, okay. Oh, that's dark. Which is really dark, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine like the end of that? Like how cute Gizmo was, and yeah. then he has to kill him at the end. How oh, like emotional or yeah. disturbed Sad. that would be. That's like right? the old the the old Yeller of horror films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if old Yeller like became a dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so but um, when he becomes Stripe, he eats the dog. Oh. And he decapitates the mother. Whoa. Like it's like that dark of a Whoa. horror yeah. film. Um, and then Billy spends most of the time running around killing gremlins with a sword. Joe Dante hires makeup artist Chris Wayless, uh to make the creatures. Um, he's kind of been in the VFX industry for a while doing kind of makeup stuff. Kind of did a couple star like helped in Star Wars and the first Indiana Jones. Um didn't didn't do he wasn't the head guy he was just kind of helping in the, in the creature shop kind of thing. Mm. This is what so this is Wayless after the fact. I have no idea how I could be so stupid as to commit to that project. I'd written one word on the front cover. Ha! I didn't think it could be done. The technology didn't exist. I didn't have a shop or a crew, but I was desperate for money. <laughs> So that's that's the the thought process he was in, or the the mental <laughs> as, state he was in like when as, he was making this. As the creature affects like main guy, right? yes, like yes. There are hundreds of gremlins in this movie, <laughs> yes, and yeah. he's in charge of all of them, <laughs> yes. And this is the this is the mindset he comes into it, <laughs> yes. He's just like already defeated, but like, yeah. oh, fuck. He's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm g I can't pull this off. What? Why would you even sign on? He needed the yeah. money. He needed the money. <laughs> oh. So Dante and Wayless start banging their heads against a wall, trying to figure out how they're going to pull this off. Uh, they first think of going full stop motion and then realize that would just take forever. Yeah. Based and off of how many gremlins are in like there. Like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's the shot of them walking down the, yeah, that, the street. Coming down the kind street. Of, yeah, that's stop motion. Stop motion. Yeah. Um, but not much. I can't think of anything else more than that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Then they had the brilliant idea of dressing up a monkey as a gremlin. Oh, yeah. As a test. <laughs> so, oh, I need to see that test footage. Uh, Dante? We actually did get a monkey and put a head on him and, and watched him careen around the editing room, pooping on everything in terror. We decided it wasn't really going to work out. Oh, they scared the poops out of a monkey. <laughs> they scared the shit out of him. Sad. <laughs> so yeah, they, <laughs> then they settled on animatronics. Right. Smart. Smart move. Smart. Okay, so six weeks before filming, Spielberg sees Gizmo, the model of Gizmo, and suggests making him a sidekick and not turn evil. Mm. 
and because he sees because how he was he like toy sales. <laughs> well, he learned his lesson from Star Wars for sure. Yeah. So 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 he throws throws off Wayless entirely, <laughs> as the Gremlins themselves didn't have much character to them. So it was easy just to make them assholes, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. He just basically made one and kind of modeled all the other ones pretty similar. Yeah. Um, but now he's got to figure out how to make all these super cute moments with Gizmo. Mm. And so he starts arguing with Dante about trying to make make Gizmo larger because of the animatronics. It would make it so much easier. And Dante's like, no, he's got to be small as possible to be even cuter. So they made multiple Gizmos. Um, at multiple sizes, depending on the shot. Mm. So his close-up shots are just his head. Oh, yeah. And they had about 10 of those, and they were all made specifically for different emotions. Okay. Wow. So they would have one head that was just sad gizmo. So there w- there weren't was not any, like, m- mechanics or machinery, like, in his face to give him emotion? It was just, like, yeah, Like a full, full range of motion, right? Okay. So, like... So if they wanted him to be happy, they would use a different head. head. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he, ha- yeah. which had which had only minor movement, exactly, like, just to, like show like that he is emoting, like maybe some blinking, but like, yeah, yeah, because he's already has like it's already rigged up to make him smile gotcha. upwards, but they couldn't gotcha. make it go downwards with the same puppet. Interesting. Mm. So Dante admits to Spielberg admits Spielberg was right about the script change because, as he says, the difference between Gremlins. And Critters, a horror film, really shitty, silly horror film, is Gizmo. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, Critters is a movie that people just kind of, it's just that silly, stupid B-movie horror movie. And people remember Gremlins because of Gizmo. Right. Yeah. yeah he gives it the heart. <laughs> My yeah. only connection to Critters is from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. When Raphael comes out of the movie theater, he's like, Ugh, what do they come up with this stuff? <laughs> That's that's my only connection to Critters is. It's another movie entirely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with the heavy animatronics. <laughs> um, so Spielberg had to fight the studio. Um, so they're they're working on casting now, and he had to fight the studio to cast Phoebe Cates, who at the time was considered this sex pot. Her last three movies, she was nude in. I can't picture it because all I think of when I think of Phoebe Cates. Is drop dead Fred and her cute little <laughs> yeah and like so when you're like she was a sex pet I, mean, I was like what in what <laughs> Fast Times at Richmond High she has that the oh. classic getting out of the pool taking off her bikini and, right um, I've never seen that uh, so but she's gosh she is so adorable but yes yeah well that's the thing is I'm like no but she's like cute not sexy like that's what I think of when I think of Phoebe Cates I just think of dead dads. <laughs> <laughs> Hold off on that. Hold off on that. <laughs> Hold off on that. Okay. So Zach Galligan, who played Billy, has this long romantic version of his casting. Basically, it's his first gig. He didn't really, he, he didn't, he was like in one television show before this. Um, he does an audition with Cades and he kind of developed a full on crush during their scene while they were working, doing the scene. Mm-hmm. And at one point, he ad-libbed a moment of resting his head on her shoulder. Like, just kind of like a cute, like, moment of resting yeah. against her, right? So this tape is given to Spielberg, who is like, he's already in love with her. Perfect. <laughs> wow. And so he so he casts Galligan, right? Phoebe Cates has a different version of this story. Uh, I remember auditioning, but I don't remember auditioning with Zach. <laughs> who? Was he in the movie? Was that the was that Billy? Was that the guy? Him? Him? I don't I don't see I, I, I don't seem to recall him having a face or a personality. Or any. She talent. was just there for puppets. Yeah, she's like, I remember Gizmo. Yeah, she's like, wait, I he wasn't I wasn't in love with Gizmo in that And movie? I remember Mark, he was the puppeteer. <laughs> I remember uh, Ned, the guy who was the head of craft services on the shoot, but this Zach my character, I don't, I don't recall this Zach character at all. Yeah, and when the dog in the show died in real life, I remember going to his funeral. <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. So, okay, um, on on top of that, more insult to injury to Galligan. Uh, this is Joe Dante on directing Zach Galligan. Zach was always trying to show off his acting skills, but could never keep his mouth closed. I would have to yell, 
yeah, you're doing great. Close your mouth. <laughs> if you go back and watch the film, his mouth is open most of the time. <laughs> oh, my God. Now I have to go back and watch this. Just like a gape, like a big dummy. Uh, well, because he's so shocked about the gremlins and, and the mogwai. And, uh, There's not a whole lot going on no. upstairs for poor Zach. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> well, see, Phoebe, she doesn't remember him because she just kept staring into the abyss of his, <laughs> his mouth, mouth and just was like. <laughs> That's why she just has these she... monologues of darkness. <laughs> 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 okay, so it is widely known for how incredibly difficult this movie was to make. Uh, puppeteering alone was kind of revolutionary at the time. And Wayless's effects team was just making up as they went. Hmm. They were just like, oh, we got to come up with this tomorrow. And however, there aren't a lot of like very particular stories of terrible things that happened. Just lots of interviews with the crew saying how awful it was in general. Mm. Mm. So uh, they all tried to immediately just forget everything just, that happened. Yeah, what well, clean. Let me let me just say this real quick, because I watched this the other night for the first time in, in years. Right. And I'm watching the gremlins and, you know, in my mind, I think like oh, they're puppets. But I, I kept thinking they these puppets are so much more believable mm-hmm. than those fucking hyenas in the exorcist movies <laughs> shit yeah they are i was like these gremlins are like <laughs> genuinely terrifying and fully yeah fle- you know fully fleshed out like characters yeah you know and then those hyenas i know i mean that you can't make hyenas into characters unless you're the lion king but uh like no actually i i i finished this story with jenny ray i showed her birds of prey yeah harley has a has a hyena. Oh yeah, it's she... fully digital. Oh really? They digitally put it over a uh, um, a German Shepherd. That's cool. And it's it looks flawless. real. It yeah. looks real as hell. <laughs> yeah. But it was funny because it reminds me of that uh, what's his face guy who directed The Exorcist, who was like, "You just can't train a hyena. They're not trainable." <laughs> and he's like, "So Ian was all they fucking did it for Birds of Prey." And then he looked it up and was like, "Oh my god, that was a German. That was shepherd. a German Shepherd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. But yeah, I kept I kept thinking that I was watching this. I was like. These guys look great. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. And when we get to the second one, they're like even way better, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so Clint, too. Clint knows all about. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Gizmo was the pinnacle of all this, like just the the center of the the pain of this whole movie. Mm. Uh, he was a pain in the ass to control, and there were at times. Uh, 12 puppeteers required to control him. Just one? Just Gizmo, just by himself. Wow. How many of those puppeteers later went on to make Team America World Police? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it all 12? Yeah, it was, it's kind of crazy. There's very little behind the scenes footage of it, but there you can see them doing it. And it, it takes like one giant hydraulic thing just to control one thing, Jeez. like his eyeball. Like his eye. Wow. And so they have to coordinate all together at the same time. And, and a lot and of the make it look like he's having a seizure. Just picturing like 12 guys all with their with one hand like <laughs> all inside of him. Inside yeah. of so, something. I got it. This pinky. <laughs> so a lot of the time all the hydraulics were run through Galligan's clothes because he's walking he's around hold, yeah, with them a lot, right? Yeah, holding him, yeah. And so they had to put all the the tubes and stuff on the inside of his uh clothes. <laughs> and so he like had like all that stuff on inside yeah. of him. He's like, uh, is 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 Phoebe around? Can she help me put these <laughs> these things on? Maybe that's why his mouth was open so much he couldn't breathe. <laughs> He's like, oh, help me. <laughs> They're like, hey, uh, close your mouth. <laughs> uh, so when the script changed for Gizmo Spawn, his all the the other uh, Mogwai, the, when they're supposed to start torturing him now, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Wayless and his crew relished in this idea of making a horrible things to do to Gizmo list. Because <laughs> they know, were so they... excited just to like fucking hate this puppet. That's funny. They are all assholes to Gizmo. And I'm like, why are <laughs> they're not even gremlins? They're just other Mogwai and they're assholes to him. Yeah, like instantly. Shouldn't he like be the boss of them? Like they spawned off of his body. Like yeah. he's basically <laughs> their dad. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they landed on the dartboard sequence. That's what they did. Oh, oh gotcha. Rolling. So sad. Poor Gizmo. And they kick him down the, the laundry chute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're seriously, they're assholes to him in the first one. They're assholes to him in the second one. He's just getting like beat up the whole time. Uh, Wayless hated 
making this movie, if this is not already clear, uh, especially everything, everything to deal with the Mogwise. So the film cost 11 million and less than 1 million of that was for the effects. So they were operating on a crazy low effects budget, wow. and which means long hours. Right. And like I said, they were just making this stuff as they went along. Yeah. Why was the effects budget so low? That's like 90% of the movie. It's, you know, it's probably the studio thing because they were just like, whatever. So we're going to make a movie called Gremlins and mm -hmm. you have 1% of the budget to actually make the <laughs> titular Gremlins of this movie. Yeah. Uh, so Wayless was completely stressed out and feeling out of his depth throughout the whole movie. And like, I, he is the tragic figure of our story. <laughs> he slept less than three hours a night. Whoa. He Why had that? a running cold for weeks. He developed kidney stones. Oof. He fell out of a truck, Oof. breaking his ankle. Ooh. And throughout, he would say how no one would be convinced in his work that people wouldn't buy into Gizmo and generally thought he was terrible at his job. Uh, bro, yeah. first of all, like you did great, okay? So we knock it off. You, we Second of all, you, if you don't think you're gonna do a good job, <laughs> why do it? It's uh, that that money, that that less than one million dollars. Uh, yeah, how much of that less than one million dollars did he get paid? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. He um, must have been desperate, poor guy. Wayless. Should he be crying in this one? <laughs> no, it's better. Yeah, he's just go. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most difficult film I've ever worked on. <laughs> it was the most difficult film I've ever worked on, bar none. But you felt like you were really part of something. The crew was great and Joe was fantastic. So at the same time, I was having the most horrendous experience of my life. It was also pretty much the best experience I've ever had. Aw. Bro, it's like bittersweet. Pick a lane, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you either hate it or you love it. <laughs> so John, Joe Dante thinks Warner Brothers never believed in the film from the get-go and only agreed to finance it so they could keep hit maker extraordinaire Steven Spielberg around. Mm. Uh, so they kind of mm. do it to satisfy him, right? So Just, just throw some money at him. Just let him yeah. do whatever he wants. Give him 11 million, but only give him a little <laughs> bit for, for effects. <laughs> <laughs> this, this allowed Dante to go around warner brothers a lot at the time the studio would push back on something that dante was doing he'd complain to spielberg who was too busy making indiana jones and the temple of doom yeah hell and, yeah he was and he'd tell the studio to back off he'd just be like what just let him do it right and so he got away with a lot of stuff <laughs> so dante would be like steven <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. warner brothers won't won't let me they won't let me do what i want and then, so he's like guys god just Give him his stuff. <laughs> okay. Then he'll leave us alone. <laughs> Give him more money for the effects, God. <laughs> That's such a Dante move. <laughs> Just the name Dante. <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> that Wayless was taking care of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so f th this is for Jenny Ray. What? Mushroom, the dog who played Barney. Oh, oh my God, Barney. Um. Were you at one point you were like, that's like the best acting I've ever seen out of a dog. Oh yeah, no, he was great. Uh, I hope he got at least one million. <laughs> you're doing great, mushroom. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Yeah. No, no, Close, mushroom. Can you, can keep, you please close your mushroom, mouth? Mushroom, you keep that mouth open. That that was what was happening. Mushroom was panting and everyone was like, Oh, mushroom is such a good boy, he's so good at acting. And then Zach was like, Oh, oh is that how <laughs> acting works? And then he's like opening his mouth and they're like, No, it's close it. Close it. Uh, Barney thought that Gizmo was real. Uh, the dog was <laughs> adored on set. Aww. Almost every interview I said, uh, like found, people mentioned Mushroom. And he was the they, goodest boy. They loved all the reactions they got out of him. Yeah. yeah. And then while Joe Dante was making the burbs, uh, Mushroom visited the set, and Dante was so excited that Mushroom remembered him. Aww. Oh, that's sweet. Cute. And the burbs is great. Yes. I was agree. Mushroom in the burbs? Did he have like a cameo? No, that no. <laughs> he like walked down the sidewalk. He's uh, like, I'm kind of a big deal around oh, here. Yeah. I was in I was Gremlins. In Gremlins. I, was I don't in know if you remember. I had, me. I had, I had a billing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, top billing in Gremlins. <laughs> so the last two months of shooting was just all puppet work, and they decided to reshoot the ending to make Gizmo the hero. So. What that ended up doing is they cut a bunch of stunts that Galligan was doing, Zach, uh, <laughs> Billy, um, that he did. He did like all these stunts with like the sword and it was killing, fighting Stripe. 
And he didn't know about the changes until he saw the final film. Oh, awesome. <laughs> he was waiting for his like action moment, like his hero moment. And then, oh, poor guy. And then it was all <laughs> Gizmo in a gizmo. car. <laughs> yeah, Gizmo in a remote control well, car. Well, he did test better with uh, their test, uh, their focus groups and their test audiences. They were just like, you know, we don't like the Zach guy, but Gizmo. He's open mouth kid. That's where yeah. they got the idea for Big, Ma- Big Mouth Billy Bass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, he went on to be a, become a millionaire making those. So. <laughs> so the studio hated Kate's monologue about her dad. Oh. <laughs> so well, not I mean, only in their defense, it's really fucked up. No, not only because it's fucked up, because it's just this twisted, wacky moment that just comes out of nowhere. But it also tells children that Santa doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a double whammy. Kids are suddenly like, wait, Santa's not real and my dad could die? Yeah. <laughs> like, kids are coming out of there with an existential crisis. Yeah, like, oh. <laughs> and that mogwai in my basement might be evil one day? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> what happens when we get our dog wet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah how, okay. How do the gremlins know what time it is? What, are they wearing a watch? Jesus yeah. Christ. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point because, you know, as we all know, time is a construct. And so <laughs> to have it say midnight, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But like if it was like sundown or some shit like that, that would or sunrise like that would make more sense. Yeah, that's that's one of the funny like we'll we'll get into Gremlins 2 for a bit. But they're, they're, that's what's really like they completely call that out. OK, because there's that se- there's a scene where they're all like, OK, so what if he's on a transatlantic flight <laughs> and yeah. then he yeah. starts eating? Yeah, like they totally like make fun zones. of that rule. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a dumb arbitrary rule. Movie, OK, so the studio logic. the studio wants to cut this monologue because it's fucking whack yeah um and it was it was supposed to be meant for like the one of the characters in the <laughs> so original draft when you said when you said that's fucking whack that's just like i was like that's what billy should have said like whoa that's fucking, fucking whack, whack. <laughs> <laughs> um end scene <laughs> yeah end movie um i'm glad I they think didn't. we should date <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm glad they didn't though because it's sort of like one of the best parts of that movie because it just is so weird <laughs> yeah so so the studio wants it cut and Spielberg's like, okay, let's have a test screening, see how it mm-hmm. plays. And the audience's, audience has never mentioned it. So they kept it in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for the bar scene, uh, Dante gets a lot of flack for that. Um, but he thinks it's the the pivotal moment of the movie. And that's when he walked or Kate sitting there like serving drinks to all the, the gremlins as oh, they're just right. fucking up the place. Yeah. Right? yeah. And they're all like playing poker and smoking cigarettes. Yeah. And like, <laughs> And she's sitting there just pouring them drinks and stuff like that. Um, But he's like, this is the pivotal moment of the movie where you are along for the ride or you're not. Yeah. Uh, Right. This is what Dante said. A lot of people say, why is she serving them? To me, it's obvious. She's the bartender. These guys come in. They're all green and ugly. (laughs) They want beer. They're liable to bite her legs off. What else would she do? (laughs) Yeah. I mean. It's kind of like a good point. It's like, because I thought I said the same thing out loud, like. Why the fuck is she serving them? Yeah, why wouldn't you just be like, okay, see Peace. you later. Yeah. <laughs> Serve yourselves. The funny thing is like, the funny thing, I, as I was watching, like it didn't even like register with me. I was like, oh yeah, she's just, she's working there. <laughs> it's just, it's just like, a I had silly the same, moment. I had the same thought as Dante. Yeah, I was like, yeah, she's just, you know, but yeah. actually the one thing that I did think of, I was like, man, it's got to suck for whoever's got to clean all this shit up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was Wayless. <laughs> yeah. Clean no, all that shit up. He, he talked about like how much he hated doing some of the puppet work later on in the movie because they all, they smelled like beer oh. and like food oh. because it was just all over the puppets. Right. It's like <laughs> beer and food and like 12 guys hand sweat. Yeah. yeah. And hydraulic fluid. <laughs> and what's his face? Like Billy Bass, a uh, body Breathing sweat. On him. And, yeah. <laughs> Billy Big mouth Bass. Billy. <laughs> I'm sure Zach is a, just a wonderful guy. <laughs> but I, I always hate like making fun of actors while we're like doing this show. Like, but I'm like, you know what? They're you know, they're in a better place than I am probably. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, they he's probably got just so much royalties out of this. <laughs> And so you know he's fine. He's okay. Yes, he can take it. He's okay. I'm never no, gonna he's meet him. sitting in an armchair in the dark in his house, listening to this with his mouth open. Yeah, <laughs> and he's I'm just crushing like a beer can <laughs> every time in his mouth. <laughs> his mouth. <laughs> like a hydraulic press. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's okay. Um, <laughs> he's doing fine. Okay, what is a mogwai? The novelization of the movie. Remember when they used to do that? Yeah. Right. Uh, was written by a guy who never saw the film. 
No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but like, did he read the script though? That's the I, bet. I don't, I'm guessing, or someone just told him offhand. <laughs> He's just know. some fucking like d- drone who works in a basement of a studio, and they're like, "Hey, uh, Brett, it- we got a we got a job for you." <laughs> and he's just like, "Yeah, what is it?" And then they give him like a one paragraph synopsis of the movie. He's like, "I got it. Yeah, this is yeah, fine. yeah, yeah, got it. Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, in that, Mogwais were created by an alien for some reason, but to sure. Dante. Um, he always thought they came from China where the results of mating a dragon and a panda. Um, okay. What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> uh, okay. No, it makes none sense. Of I got that no... make The size <laughs> of them. <laughs> you, you don't know how big the dragon was. How about Mushu? Remember from Mulan? Yeah, Mushu right. is yeah. tiny. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow. <laughs> Okay, uh, Gremlins released on June 8th, 1984. Same weekend as, anybody remember? Oh, oh God. Uh, uh, was it Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. Yeah. Same Damn. weekend as Ghostbusters. Clint wins. Ding, ding, ding. But, yeah. But it did not hurt its box office. Um, according to Dante, the only place... Uh, so it did really well. Like, And I think, yeah. I think a lot of it was when you go to the theater and the movie you want to see is sold out and then you oh. go to another movie well right like, well let's go see this gremlin yeah you're oh, just like well you know i wanted to see this but i've heard this is good yeah like i remember going i remember fellowship of the ring was always like uh fellowship of the rings sold out oh oceans 11 like mm. and then oceans 11 got that kick from that you know yeah that not much that that doesn't really happen that much anymore since you could just buy it online and then yeah. whether yeah. or not you actually go i don't think i have ever gone to the movies and just been like what's playing i don't know i'll just see whatever this is like who like fucking serial killers do that <laughs> yeah i remember one time we were sta- we went to the theater once and there was that that couple standing there and they were like just staring like well i i've heard that's good do you want to see that they no, were no. deciding what movie to see at the movie <laughs> really what the fuck ian and i were like bewildered you guys we're remember like, her. what <laughs> um, so i'm looking at uh at zach galligan's imdb page homie like aged well like he looks like a ton better than he does <laughs> that he did See, in 84 he's doing just he's fine. just fine but he, and he'll kick your ass too he'll, he'll kick my ass but you know it's okay because he's he'll look handsome doing it <laughs> and your <laughs> mouth will be a gay poly he <laughs> he'll look handsome and rich yes <laughs> okay so gremlins does great uh it it cost 11 million Made uh, 148 million in the United States, Ooh, third nice. highest grossing film of 1984. Hot damn! Um, and according to Dante, the only place Gremlins beat Ghostbusters every weekend was in New York City because the city was so pissed about the traffic jams that movie caused. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Whether or not that's real or not, they're like, I don't "Fuck know. you, Ghostbusters! <laughs> We're gonna go <laughs> see some little green men fuck some shit up." <laughs> That's the New York way. <laughs> you go down our city, we're not going to see a movie. <laughs> Mug wife of life. <laughs> um, I was going to say something about, did Dan Wayless get back end? Chris Wayless? Or, yeah, Chris Wayless. Uh, I Where did no I get idea. Dan from? I don't know. I think he called him Mark or later. Oh. <laughs> Mark was the puppeteer. I, uh... <laughs> I thought you meant Chris when you said Now that. Chris Wayless is sitting in an armchair in his house in the dark, crushing cans. Yeah, like, <laughs> son of a bitch. Fucking, I, I blood, sweat, and tears into the puppets of that movie. I both loved it. I hated it. Don't you remember my Chris name? Chris Wayless is sitting in the dark, putting cans in, in Zach Galligan's mouth yeah. and crushing them. Yeah. <laughs> Zach Galligan is a puppet. That's what was happening. Exactly. That's how you get Muppets to smile and emote is you have their mouth open. Yeah. That's what all those hydraulics were on his body. Those weren't for Gizmo. That was for him. That's Yeah, that's what they told him. It's like, oh, these yeah. are for Gizmo. But really what it was, they were trying to hook it up to his mouth to keep it closed. closed. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. A few weeks before Gremlins was Spielberg's Temple of Doom. This is where your hat comes back into play. Yeah. Hold on, it's got to put it back on. So these two movies were both rated PG. And this is before PG-13 existed. Mm -hmm. And parents were furious um, that they weren't rated R. 
Gremlins? Gremlins. The sequence where the mom's going <laughs> Rambo. ballistic uh, Rambo yeah. in the kitchen. Oh, we Your favorite scene. We haven't talked about the 20 minutes that I need for to talk about how badass that mom is. I know, okay. right? First of all, like... No, does not hesitate. This is rarely seen in any kind of scary or horror movies these days. She's just like, what the fuck is this? Why is it in my house? I don't care. I'm going to turn on this shredder. And like immediately kills like four of them in a row. Like bam, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't even think about it. Badass. Such a badass. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's what I was going to say too. Like for, you see something strange in your house. Like yeah. you don't need to sit and ask it questions. You're no, not just you like just fucking stab that thing. You're in my blender. You're going to get blended. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, into the mic- microwave, bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially those things because they look very menacing. Like it's, yeah, it's not like they were like rats or something. They they're like the size of toddlers, like green, slimy, <laughs> weird, alien looking yeah. motherfuckers tearing like, up the house. She just like slowly reaches over, just like and blend <laughs> and frappe. Yeah, <laughs> chop, chop, corn yeah. setting. Chop. Er. Yeah, right. Uh. <laughs> the microwave, she's like. Boop, 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 defrost. Yeah. No. Time, time cook. Yeah. 30 Pop, seconds. Pop, pop, <laughs> popcorn seconds. setting. Yeah. Weighed. Weighing. Weighing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She probably saw when she walked up in the attic and saw those eggs and she was like, I've seen alien. Fuck this shit. Oh, yeah. For yeah. real. <laughs> well, okay. So, you know, the bullshit thing about. So she, as a badass, kills immediately four gremlins. And then Zach comes home and she's like, oh, it was a horror. And then he treats her like, oh, mom, it's okay. He treats her like she's all fragile and he's like, go stay with the neighbors. You'll be safe. And then how many gremlins does he kill in that movie? Yeah, exactly. None. None well, gremlins. If you count the theater the explosion. Theater full of right. the rest of them. That was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. He kills the rest of them. But sort of like on accident. <laughs> <laughs> now, the thing that kind of confused me about the movie as I watched, rewatched it again for the second time, because yeah, it is a horror comedy, and I understand why parents are being like, "What the hell, guys?" Yeah. But they killed the old woman, right, with her chair. They threw her out the window. Oh my god! <laughs> right, like she died. Right, like she <laughs> died. No, no, I think it's very funny, but this I movie never says that. anybody dies. Yeah, because then but, it, all, but it, it very clearly is like implies it. Like, yes. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, then I, the gremlins take the. The tractor of the, the plow. Uh, the plow comes to their house, but like you don't see anything. Like, but it's just yeah. implied. And right. then, they, and then the the cops go, "There's been an accident," and then like they're like dead serious. There's been there's been a, a, yeah. a situation, and it, they never say that he dies. Yeah. And but it was like so serious. But then he comes back in the second one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, "Oh yeah, he oh, he made fine. it. Yeah, like, he's fine. Let's he's just fine. bring him back." But yeah. that but that lady with all the cats, she definitely died. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. you don't get like shot out of your what are those called? Those like lift stair lift yeah, like, yeah, stair, stair genies yes, or whatever. Yeah. You don't get fucking shot out of your house <laughs> from like the second floor of one of those and live through that. You just <laughs> so don't. my grandmother had one, and we always and I shot her out. <laughs> yes, yeah, she, she, she was okay though. My aunts had to like tell us the rules of the of the chairs. Like they were very adamant. I was like, it's for your grandmother. Yeah. You can only ride in it once. And once you've ridden it, you can never ride it ever again. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> did you have to like choose your moment to ride I it? I did. Carefully? I was like, okay, all right, all right, okay. Uh it'll it's be today my, the day. It's like, no. It'll be my birthday. Today's the day I'll touch yeah. the sun. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> testing testing the wind. Yeah. <sighs> I sense it. It's I mean, I get where they're coming from because my grandmother had like just a shit ton of grandkids. You right. Know? So she, it, it, would, it would have worn it out, you know? That's an <laughs> expensive piece of medical equipment. They don't yeah. need, like, you assholes playing around on it all the time. Yeah. Your your aunts had more rules about the chair than they did about the mogwai. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, that's> true. <laughs> which, speaking of which, Billy is a terrible pet owner. Can we just say that? Like, he immediately breaks every fucking rule oh, of owning I know, that mogwai. Right? That's actually one of, one of my favorite things about, actually, the movie is that he gets Mog- he, he gets Gizmo taken away from him. Like, yeah. he doesn't deserve to have him. And oh, he gets yeah. taken away. And I'm actually kind of surprised of all the things that happens in that movie. That's one thing that the studio was okay with. Because it, it's not a happy ending. Because, I mean, sure, well, they defeat the Gremlins. Well, because he's not responsible but it's like, it's, at all. I know, but it's so interesting because it's not like this heartwarming thing. But Gizmo really loves you. Well, yeah. you can stay with him. And it was like, no, you <laughs> idiot. You ruined this town. Yeah, the shopkeeper <laughs> comes like, the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, he's like, bro. There were bro. three things. Three things. That's all. Yeah. It's not that fucking hard, Billy. It's not that fucking hard. You can keep a dog alive. You can keep a mogwai alive, and not making gremlins. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> oh, real quick. One of my favorite things that I noticed in this that I'd never noticed before is there's there's a scene where the dad is at the convention and he's on the phone. Mm-hmm. And in the background, you see the time machine. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to Billy or the mom or whoever he's talking to. I remember and then the next scene, the time machine is gone. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a bunch. There is a ton of Easter eggs in there. Spielberg's in there. Um, oh, yeah. I saw that. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith, the composer's mm-hmm. in there. Uh, and I think there's like one other person, like one of the producers, but there's just all this random shit that they were just throwing in the background because every time it cuts to it, there's something different. Yeah. I don't understand the dad's storyline of just being like a bad inventor. Like what did that have to do with the movie? <laughs> that is one thing that Wayless did enjoy. <laughs> making his bad inventions? Just making these little inventions. Yeah. Like why didn't we just market these as toys? Yeah, for real. Yeah. I mean, the no, bathroom, like- bathroom, buddy. It, it was... corn baller. <laughs> It was, it was the corn baller. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was a funny, like, weird character quirk, I guess. But maybe it was all just a mechanism to get him in, like, the that basement shop in Chinatown trying to hawk his bathroom buddy. Yeah, yeah. no, it, yeah, it doesn't seem to add up to anything. Anything. Like, yeah. th- none of the gremlins get killed by weird devices. Right? Like, that would, just that would make blender, sense. Right? Like, yeah, a regular oh, blender, my dad's regular really microwave. bad at making inventions. And then, like, you would expect that the gremlins would all just be killed off in horrifying <laughs> right. ways by these bad inventions. He's really yeah. bad at making inventions, but really good at making gremlin killers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so back to the rated R part. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, um, we went off a huge tangent. Yeah. So Dante <laughs> blames Warner Brothers for all of this because the they cut really um, overly cute trailers that – focused squarely on Gizmo mm. as the character. So they sold it as a kid's movie when it's like not exactly. quite a kid's movie. Yeah. All right. So this is what Dante said about um, people being pissed off. So the idea of taking a four-year-old to see Gremlins, thinking it's going to be a <laughs> cuddly, funny animal movie, and then seeing that it turns into a horror picture, I think people were upset. <laughs> exactly. And so very famously, this is when Spielberg suggested a rating in between the two. Um, Spielberg said, I created the problem. And all, I also supplied the solution. And so Damn, the MPAA created PG-13. And this was first applied in August of 1984 for Red Dawn. That was Spielberg's idea? hmm Wow. Yeah. He was really good friends with the, the head guy. <laughs> the head of the MPAA. Which made things <laughs> easy for him to right. get stuff through. He's like, hey, listen, I know there's like some boobs in this movie, can, but can it just be PG-13? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. Exactly. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. So I ripped this guy's heart out and uh, it burst into flames in my movie? Yeah. yeah. Just, uh... oh, I think our friend Benjamin Franklin would say that it's not rated R. <laughs> yeah. Wink, ben- wink, 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 Benjamin? Wink, wink. Really? Wow. <laughs> Spielberg? <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> so the, the president hey. of MPA, MPAA was like, Oh, Steven, <laughs> everyone's getting on my pool. case. I, 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 everyone's mad about mad at me about rated R stuff. <laughs> uh, so I just gave him a hundred dollar bill and, uh, <laughs> and a bathroom, buddy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just threw out an arbitrary number, uh, thirteen. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, fast forward to 1998. Warner Brothers sues. Hasbro for the similarities between Mogwai and <gasps> Furbies. Yes. Uh, oh my God. Did you have a Furby? That was the stuff the nightmares were made of. I, did you have one though? A friend of mine did. And every time I like would go over to his house, that little, <laughs> that little son of a bitch would start talking to me like, shut yeah. the hell up. No, we, I, I had I got, a friend that had one too. And yeah. we were told to be quiet in the house so we didn't wake up the Furby. <laughs> Like we had to go into his room because we had to walk through. We, it was sitting in the kitchen in the living room and we had to walk through it. had to be quiet and go to his room and not make any noise because the Furby would go off. And I was like, why don't you turn off the Furby? And he's like, battery. don't say that to my mom. Just take the batteries out. They're being held hostage in their <laughs> I totally own home. I forgot about that. Oh my God. They're being held hostage in their own home by a Furby. Furby. Yeah. They're just like, sitting quietly. Speaking of people sitting quietly in the dark, just the whole family's like, and don't a, a no mouth and gape Furby. No one, no one talk. You'll wake it That's up. A Twilight Zone episode for real. <laughs> um, so I weird. did. I had a Furby too, and then my sister got one, and we both got one for Christmas. And they way oversold the capabilities of the Furby. They're like, <laughs> yeah. you can teach it to talk, and they talk to each other, and it talks to you. And, maybe, and I was like, this is no. Did this you try is- to like teach it like swear words? Like, come on, Furby. Say shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, I don't even remember, but I remember, like, being really into it for, like, a week because I'm like, this is so cool. But really, it was just like, okay, the Furby makes random noises and, like, blinks. It was just, like, a, a super basic kind of animatronic toy that mm-hmm. didn't do, like, half the things they said that it did. So, yeah, the novelty of the Furby wore off pretty quick. Uh, so they 
the Warner Brothers sues and they settled out of court. And the very next year there was a gizmo Furby, which is <laughs> kind of weird because I don't think that's I was sitting there looking at it. I was like, Furby's really only lasted like that year. Yeah, it was yeah. the hot Pretty toy of the year. Yeah, it was, kinda... the, it was the fidget spinners of 98. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, Gremlins 2, the next batch. <laughs> okay. Uh, A better not much movie. to say about this one. Um, so Warner Brothers really wanted another film, and they had a bunch of writers come up with a handful of concepts. <laughs> uh, Gremlins go to Vegas, Gremlins on Mars. Yes, yes. All this nonsense. Yes, right? please, all and of it. They... So it was exactly that Key and Peele sketch? Yes. Where just like a bunch of people just bullshitting in a room? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Have you seen that? Hold on, on yeah. a second. It's so good. <laughs> so they couldn't figure it out. And so they come back to Dante years later. Uh-huh. And because uh, it, w- it came out in 90 or 91. And they came they come back to Dante and said, um, if you can make and release the film by next year, we'll let you do whatever you want. And um, Dante's like, hell yes. Wow. And he was so, like, hold my beer challenge. Exactly. <laughs> no, a hundred percent. He, so he gets his calls, all his old crew Wayless immediately passes. He's like, fuck no, no. Hey, Smart. Bring, bring. Hello. Hey, Wayless. It's uh, Joe. Uh, no, Click. sorry. <laughs> He just like takes his phone and just snaps it in half, <laughs> shuts it out the window. Hey, 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 uh, hey, w- hey, Chris, it's uh, it's it's it's, it's Joe. Oh, hey, hey, Joe, how's it going? Good, good. Hey, um, remember Gremlins? <laughs> <laughs> Is that him dying in the hospital? Flatlines? Yeah, exactly what <laughs> it was. was. The sound of him exactly, flatlining. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> he killed Chris Wayless. Poor Chris Wayless. He only worked on a couple more films. He has a very short filmography after that, and I think he just generally just quit the biz after that. Because mm. of the or, PTSD? Well, he, he, just, he just didn't believe in himself. Yeah, I know. Aww. Maybe he was just not cut up for the pressure. Um, so then Dante goes to Rick Baker, who legendary Rick oh, yeah, Baker yeah. from- Oh, Ricky Baker. Uh, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> uh, from welcome. American Werewolf in London, Thriller, Men in Black, Mm. the extraordinaire of this like the the king of makeup and uh practical effects and effects in creatures and puppets animatronics um and he says no <laughs> so <laughs> you said we have like okay yeah <laughs> yeah so so to entice baker he dante came up with the genetically modified gremlins mm. and so the, they was like and then we can just come up with all these other ones and a bat one and then rick baker's like <laughs> Hell yeah. And then he, so he just jumped at it. He was like, I can make all these crazy ones. Awesome. And I'm just going to throw out one weird one. A vegetable gremlin. <laughs> Love it. It's in the movie. I've got yeah, two but... words for you. Spider gremlin. <laughs> Lady boobs gremlin. Watch gremlins too. Then watch the key and pill <laughs> sketch, sketch about it. It is fucking hilarious. It's so great. It is probably exactly what happened. <laughs> No, I think they even say that in the sketch. Like, yeah. like at the end, like there's like some some captions over says, this like, is... not, By the way, none of that is going to be in the movie. The All of are... this was All in of the movie. this was in the movie. <laughs> and it fucking was. Uh, spider gremlin? <laughs> you, sir, oh my God. are a raging psychopath. <laughs> I fucking love Jordan Peele so much. He's so, so good. He's really good. So, there's, uh. so they set up a lot of stuff in there uh, in the, that sequence where they first go through the lab. And one of them, you see all those animals. Right. And one of them is a freaking elephant. He had plans to make an elephant gremlin, but oh. it was cost way too much. So oh, they, my God. They scrapped it. I'm um, a little disappointed. The yeah. cameo by Leonard Malton trashing the original film, saying, like, this is a terrible film. It's now on video, and it's terrible, is actually how M- Malton felt about the first movie. <laughs> Really? Uh, and so Dante was just oh, yeah. a, as a favor was just like, hey, you want to come on my movie and just talk trash about my original movie? <laughs> Joe Dante he gets sounds by... like a hoot and a half. At no, really. He sound, he at great. least he has a good sense of humor about oh, himself yeah. and his work. Yeah. Um, Gremlins 2 is decidedly not a shit show uh, as Dante had complete control of over that film. Mm-hmm. And he, he went hog wild. He wanted to spoof sequels and the film industry at large like uh he deliberately wanted that five minute looney tunes sequence at the beginning to him that perfectly summed up what this movie was going to be huh um yeah. so no problems on that movie he he just was just like yeah i'm gonna do it 
And I fucking love that movie. <laughs> it's a great one. He, yeah, he just went for it. He just went for it with like the meta references. It's like it went full Muppets with all like the weird individual characters. <laughs> and the intellectual gremlin. And the intellectual that dude is gremlin. The best. <laughs> Bob, what guys. we all want, a civilization. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just talk about Greta for the next 20 minutes, shall we? Greta, yeah, the, the... you get your 20 minutes of talking about busty lady <sighs> Griml- gremlins. <laughs> Gremlin boobs. There's yeah. such a strange, weird attraction there, you guys. <laughs> Big old boobs. <laughs> I mean, for a gremlin. They're technically small boobs. True, true. Greta. The... You, you were um, that character at the end where he gets trapped in the bathroom with her and he's like, you know what? Why not? Like, yeah. All right. Yeah. He gets locked in with her and she's like wearing a wedding dress. And then he's like, <laughs> he looks scared. And then he goes, mm, all right. Yeah. Zip unzips his pants. This is why we need a lady in the writer's room. <laughs> it's true. So I just Googled Gremlin or Greta the Gremlin. Mm-hmm. And there's some strange looking weird ass cosplay. <laughs> Uh, I thought you were going to say porn. Uh, there's there's got to be some deviant art on there. Oh, oh for absolutely. Sure. Yeah. No, this Take is, off your uh, safe search. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are like human eyes, like humanized Greta. No. But for some reason, just that regular Greta is just like, all right. I'll give it a just shot. my size. I'll give it a shot. into it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lastly, this is what Dante said about doing a third Gremlins with Gizmo. He drinks. He's uh, very difficult to direct. He's got quite a swell head by the second movie. You'll notice he hasn't worked since. <laughs> uh, they've been toying with trying to make a, another one for years or rebooting it or remaking it or whatever, mm-hmm. but nothing's I, you come You know, of it. I just hate this bullshit where they're like, it's a reboot. It's like, no, just you don't need to just make another Gremlins movie. It's not like you can like put completely different characters in that universe. Yeah. And it's like fine. It doesn't need to be it doesn't yeah. need to be a reboot or a sequel just or I mean technically it would be a sequel but like just keep it in the same yeah in the same universe. Yeah, come yeah. up with a new Billy, a new Phoebe Cates, new Same, fucked come up back. Just, just yeah. like just Have double it up again. Yeah. Just just yeah. make it worse. Their original plan he, he wanted to make uh Gremlins taking over a city, a New York. Mm-hmm. And they were like no. That's like, too big. Yeah, so he's like, just doing an office tower. Okay, find then... an office building in New York. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, go hog wild. And this time, elephant gremlin. <laughs> yes. Well, when Ian said, like, gremlins go to Mars or gremlins take Vegas, like, that sounds amazing. Oh, my God. Gremlins, gremlins take Vegas? Vegas would be great. <laughs> just think about, like, all the stuff that they could do, though. Like, you know, they would go to, like, this, like, Thunder from Down Under. You know, they'd go see a Cirque du Soleil show or they would be in the show. Oh, Gre- <laughs> Greta could be starring as one of like the like a like one of the top like Vegas performers yeah. on the strip. <laughs> yes. She it's, has uh, her own she has her own like vaudeville. residency at the Mirage or whatever the hell. Yeah, no, on the side the burlesque of the, show. <laughs> in the side of the flamingo instead of uh Donnie and Marie Osmond. Yeah. She just crosses out Marie's face and puts her own up there. Greta. <laughs> Donnie and Greta. <laughs> or like instead of Celine Dion, it's Greta. Greta at the Coliseum. Holy Fuck yeah, shit, you guys. We're basically the writers' room of Gremlins three right now. She, she. I mean, she does survive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she marries that dude. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it goes. <laughs> no witnesses. <laughs> the bathroom dude. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel like that's gonna last. I think she's too good for that bathroom guy. But right. um, we were talking about Greta, and I was like, she's Miss Piggy. Like she's giving off like super Miss Piggy vibes, where she's just kind yeah. of a diva. And like doing her own thing. And he's like, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, yeah, Gremlins 2 is kind of a Muppets movie. Like if you think about it, you just got all these like wacky characters, like shenanigans. Yeah. Gremlins and Muppets take Vegas. Yes. Boom. Okay. Was it worth it? Yeah. Yes. I I do think it was worth it. This is one of those shows. This is one of those movies. I have a whole list of movies that I want to watch with my kids that they're just still just a little too young to watch. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely in there with all the movies that I wanted to watch. Like in Temple of Doom is too, because I just love Indiana Jones. But like <laughs> my son's like, dad, can I watch this? Can I watch that? I was like, someday, son. When you're older. When you're older. <laughs> and, and I talked to my wife too. I was like, well, you know, I saw Jurassic Park when I was eight. She's like, no, Quinn's not going to watch Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. Dude's going to be 10 this month. I was like, well, maybe for his birthday, we can watch Jurassic Park. I feel like he could watch Jurassic Park at 10. I think he could. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would say that... Uh, I didn't really grow up with original Gremlins. I I remember it, um, but Gremlins 2 saw all the time when it was on television. Fucking love that movie. So I think Gremlins is worth it just so you just can get to, get to Gremlins 2 <laughs> yeah. because that movie just goes balls to the wall and goes just like, <laughs> fuck it. Here are all the Gremlins. Let's go crazy. Yeah. 
And I think that Gremlins is worth it for the Gremlins 3 movie that we all just started <laughs> yeah, writing exactly. tonight in this room. Gremlins Take Vegas. <laughs> Gremlins Take Vegas. Gremlins on the Vegas Strip. <laughs> the rivalry between Miss Piggy and Greta would be It'd be amazing. Epic. Yeah. Muppets versus Gremlins, Gremlins. movie. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. It's just, it's just the Muppets killing Gremlins. <laughs> killing Gremlins. That's amazing. I would watch the shit out of that. It's like a post-apocalyptic there you go. It's post-apocalyptic. It's... The Muppets are the only survivors. Yeah, in it's Vegas. In Vegas, you know, like in, like in yeah. a uh, in that Resident <laughs> Evil movie where mm-hmm. like Vegas is just like a huge desert now. Yeah. It's yeah. like that, but that's the Muppets yeah. and they're fighting off like. Because the gremlins, because like if you unleash those gremlins on a city, like you're fucked. Like they're taking over. Yeah. And so yeah, this is post gremlin takeover. Listen, this is brilliant. <laughs> Someone call Spielberg. You got his number, right? It's on the inside of your hat. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just, gonna, just, I'm just gonna call Joe. I'll be like Joe, and he's gonna go, oh, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> These podcasters want to make a movie. <laughs> it kind of sounds cool. Can we make it? <laughs> um, and we would have to have there would have to be like a cameo. I don't think Phoebe Kate's acts anymore, but we would have. Yeah. We'll we'll give her. She would do it. She would do it for this Gremlins movie. <laughs> yeah, I feel like she'd come out Gremlins. of retirement. We're like, look, we'll give you the most. We will write the most fucked up monologue about your about someone or dying or your dad. Like, w- you will have like the most epic weird monologue if you just come back and do Gremlins three. <laughs> if we can get, we just get Kevin Klein, her husband, oh, God, her course. husband, and yeah. then you can easily get Phoebe. Of course. Yep. Okay. So we've got our cast. We'll bring back um old Billy what's his face um, Big Mouth Billy Bass <laughs> Big Mouth Billy Bass and then we'll get the we'll get the Klein Cates the Klein Cates family in there the Muppets uh, you need a gremlin that gets spliced with a comedian oh yeah you gotta waka have waka. one of those you have to have What's the deal with eating after midnight? Yeah. What's with these buffets? Yeah. <laughs> Open after midnight. What do they want us to breed? <laughs> Don't send the gremlin to Vegas. That, you guys, that's why. See, this is what I'm saying. This is why Vegas is like the perfect setting for this movie because of the 24-hour lifestyle. Yeah. So, yeah, worth it. Now let's just make this movie.